What's up fam and good morning. I'm Bishop Sylvester Mixon and I get the wonderful privilege of serving as the lead pastor here at Unity Christian Center. David said in Psalms 122, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm telling you, when you come in today, have expectation. Expect that God is going to meet you just where you are. I believe as the praise goes up, as the worship goes forth, the prayers uh, reach heaven today and the word of God touches your heart, lives are gonna be changed. Souls will be saved. Men will be baptized and people will be set free. We believe today is your day. So have great expectation because God is about to blow your mind this morning. Welcome. What's up, fam? And good morning. And I'm bless his name. For the Lord our God is good, and his mercy endures forever. I don't know what you're going through today, but as you enter in, I declare that there's some things that are about to come off of you. Depression is coming off. Fear is coming off. Rejection, the frustration, the pain is leaving today. Every time you praise, David said in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Today, as you lift those hands, as you clap your hands, 
I believe that God is about to do in you exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. So lift up those heads, lift up your hands, open your mouth, and begin to bless your God. Bless Him until freedom comes. Bless Him until you feel free in your spirit. Bless Him until the chains fall off. Bless Him until the breakthrough comes. Bless Him until you feel your freedom. This is your day. Hear me, people of God. This is the day. Now is the time for salvation. Now is the time for deliverance. I don't know what you came here for. I don't know what you came here with. But if you will give God what he likes, the Bible says, praise is calmly for the upright. Hebrews 11 and 6 says he's a rewarder to those of us who diligently seek him. I'm telling you, if you will run after him today in rejoicing, God is about to do what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, what has entered into the heart of men. Work 
of our hands. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I will not be before you long. Just have a few announcements. On April 14th, our marriage ministry will be hosting their first gathering. Please save the day, and as we ask to all married couples, please go to our church website at www.unichristiancenter.org and sign up for the marriage ministry. There you will find out about more information for this event and all future events. And for further details, please reach out to Minister Karia and Minister Tamika. And then on April 27th will be our Bishop's 40th birthday bash. This event will be at 5 p.m. and the, th the theme is date night attire. As you can see the flyer behind me, take time to go ahead and scan that QR code to RSVP. It has a very strict head count, so if you do not RSVP, you will not be allowed in. So go ahead and take time to RSVP, and we cannot wait to see your face in the place. And remember always, we ask that you visit our church website at www.unitychristiancenter.org and we ask that you like, share, and comment on today's message. And let's all prepare our hearts and minds for the praise and worship team.
Come on, let's hear the sound in this place. I hear the sound. Let's make a sound in this place. We honor you, God. We lift you. We exalt you. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. I thank you today, God, for this divine opportunity, God. I thank you for this divine appointment, Father. I pray now, God, that you would allow the words of my mouth in the meditations of my heart, God, to be acceptable in your sight, God, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Papa, I know I can't do this without you, but even if I could, I wouldn't want to. So, Holy Spirit, I yield and surrender to your will and to your way. I thank you that you preach, you teach, you prophesy, you heal, you deliver, for I am only your vessel, God. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that. He woke us up this morning and he started us on our way. We in our right mind. We got our life, health, and strength. Come on. Our families are blessed. In spite of what it looks like, you still got the breath of Abba in your body. So I let the redeemed of the Lord let us say so whom he has redeemed out of the hands of our enemies I've been redeemed somebody say so in this place <laughs> redeemed of the Lord say so you guys can be seated in the presence of the Lord I am super thankful and super honored for this divine opportunity. Um, I salute my leaders, um, Bishop Sylvester Mixon and our lovely lady, Lady April Mixon. I, I thank you guys so much for this uh, opportunity. Um, our online campus, hello, 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 hello. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, love, and share tonight's experience. I do believe that there is a word from the Lord. Um, I'm not going to be before you long, but immediately after I finish, um, Elder Derek will come up and we'll begin our baptism. So that's how we're going to flow today. You good with that? All right. Um, today, our scripture text will be coming from Luke 17 and 5. And I think the translation that I'll be reading from is the NLT version. It ain't much, but it got much in it. <laughs> got much in it. That was a bar there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Got a little bit of stomach in me. Um, the apostle said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. That's it. May we see it in the presence of the Lord. Everybody say, lift your hands and say, Lord, show me how to increase my faith. And our subject today, I want to talk a little bit about what I believe that the Lord gave me to be the four phases of our faith. Conviction, conversion, connection, and conception. It was in my preparation. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> God is good. It was in my preparation for tonight's teaching that I realized that there is a difference between faith and belief. Faith involves reliance and trust, and it endures in the faces of doubts. And um, belief is simply something we take to be true. Example, I'll acknowledge you that you, that you are my savior, but I'm not going to get relationally involved with you enough to experience your lordship. I think I mentioned before that when we accept Jesus into our hearts, initially we are receiving the benefit of his sacrifice. We declare him Lord when not only are we reaping from his life, but we begin to partner with him and giving him our life. Faith requires reverence and relationship and works where belief only requires acknowledgement. How do I now I do consider uh, that our belief is foundational to our faith In belief. I come to God and it's in faith that I walk with God. Yeah. Belief gets me in, but faith gets me through. Uh, James 1, 2, and 4, it says that faith produces endurance. Habakkuk says that the just shall 
live by faith. And one version says that they walk by faith. Believe gets me in, but, but faith gets me through. Our faith is relational. Our faith is a relational response to the partnership. While belief is simply an acknowledgement of the truth, and belief there really isn't any relational involvement. I don't have to be involved with you to acknowledge you. Same with God. We don't have to be involved with him to acknowledge that he is a God. Think about it. Almost everybody acknowledges that there is a God. Stars and strangers alike use their personal platform to stand and acknowledge God. But acknowledgement does not take faith. Tell your neighbor one day we all going to bow. Yeah, we all going to get there. Because the scripture says that at the name of Jesus, what? Every knee shall bow. And that don't take faith. It don't take, that don't take faith. That takes your belief. Belief is foundational to our faith. But just because we receive Christ does not mean that we are walking by faith. Our belief is more of a personal experience. My belief is what fuels my confession that Jesus is Lord. Now, our belief is beautiful, and I'm not, not going to be shaded to our belief. However, belief is not God's final destination for our life. Romans 10, 9, and 10 says you can confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, right? That belief, yeah. What separates from faith from belief is that in order for it to be faith, it must be fruitful because faith without works is dead. James said, if you're going to show me some faith, you got to show me some works, right? Because faith is fruitful. Three components, I believe, to, that make up our faith. Uh, number one is, his, is it his, his presence. And I get that from Exodus 3 and 1 where God says, I am that I am. Like at the end of the day, I am that I am. And in our faith, we first have to acknowledge the presence of God. And then two, it's my personal perspective of his personhood. Ah, Hebrews 11 and 6 says that he who comes to God must first believe that he is God. And then um, Peter, well, the Jesus was asking the disciples, who do men say that I am? Our personal perspective. All the other disciples said Elijah and all other people, but he said, Peter, who you say that I am? His personal perspective. Uh, and then our proximity to one another. James 5 and 8 says, draw near to me and I come close to you. Remember, faith is relational. It's relational. And then I want to take that a little bit further. It's not also our, not only our proximity to God, but because God loves humanity, our faith has to do with proximity to what he loves. Okay. So if we don't love, we don't know God. Because God is love. God is relational. I remember one time I was, something had done happen a few years ago, and I was like, I'm just tired of people. Like, just forget this. Like, just take me on home, and I don't want to deal with nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm done with people. And the Lord says, to be done with people is to be done with me, because I am in humanity. Somebody says it's relational. Now I would like to discuss what I believe to be the four phases of our faith. Phase one is conviction. Conviction can be defined as a legal declaration that a person is guilty of a specific criminal offense. So look at your neighbor and say, you ain't perfect. We're not perfect. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, James 16 and 8 says that when he comes, he will convict the world of, the sin, of their sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. That's John 16 and 8. Now, apart from the presence of Jesus, apart from Holy Spirit, there is no conviction of sin. Repentance uh, in its Hebrew form, I don't, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but it literally means to return. Mm. Not just turn, but return. Uh, it means to turn back to something that we've strayed from. Matthew 3 and 8 says that, uh, Jesus says, prove the way you live by your repentance of your sins and turn to God. The NIV version says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Yeah, so repentance is part of our faith, right? 
Yeah, because we need that conviction. True repentance is our response to Holy Spirit's conviction, and it involves first conviction and then returning. For this kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow. But worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. It's not simply being sorry or sorrowful. It's not just knowing I'm wrong or what I'm doing is wrong. It's, re it's not repentance until there is a consistent change in our minds about the behavior. Uh, Paul said that it is with the mind that I serve God. So it's not until I settle in my mind that this doesn't glorify God. I'll continue in it. This is why one of the major grounds of warfare for the believers is where? In our mind. The scripture says that we pull down strongholds and every thought that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. That was Satan's. That's what he said. He, uh, Satan, the scripture says in Isaiah that Satan said in his mind that I will, the I wills of Satan. The Bible uses the words, the term stronghold to describe harmful thought patterns, arrogant attitudes, or messages from the outside world that have left a lasting impression on Christians. Think about your life, your experiences in the past. It hasn't all been good. And because our mind doesn't automatic, our, all our mind does is recycle uh, information. All it does is recycle it until we put something new in it. So if, if I was molested or hurt when I was a little girl, when I get older, if I don't put something else outside of that offense and that hurt in my mind, I'm going to be a victim to the experience. So now when I try to walk in faith, I can't because I can't be relational because my mind has not been changed. I still see myself in that same experience. I think the song say your mind is here. Your body is here. Yeah, there you go. But your mind is on the other side of town. And that's what the Christian community looks like. The body's here. The body's here. But our mind is on the other side of town. And it don't necessarily mean something like I'm just thinking about the sin I can commit. Sometimes our minds are left in that experience. Yeah, God is good. Strongholds are simply mental systems. Say strongholds are systems that manage our thoughts. This is why you can't, this is why you can't change your mind. Like a lot of times when our mind is, when we've been affected by something, it's difficult for us just to automatically change our minds. The scripture says that you first got to bind the strong man. You got to bind them. So we got to bind those thoughts that do not represent what God has said about our life. And then we go in and we replant what God has said. Uh, this is why once we are, we're this is why once we're saved, we are still working out our own soul salvation. And while we are working that out, God is working within us the power and the desire to do what pleases him. This is why a lifestyle of worship is so important. I'm not talking about songs. True worship is a sacrificial presentation of one's life to God. Worship leads to mental transformation. We've seen how the caterpillar, uh, how the caterpillar turns into the butterfly. There is actual a phys actually a physical change in its appearance. A believer's metamorphosis begins when his or her mind. We may not necessarily see the change in our appearance, but our attitudes, our behaviors, our decisions, our relationships, our conversations, places, desires, passions. This is why we let this mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. We begin to witness us being transformed into his likeness. Listen, we will never be more than what we think. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Take Genesis 1 and 26, when God said, let us make man, that was a thought. In our image and after our likeness, that was his thought. 
Adam came, that was a perfect representation. Adam came as a perfect representation of the mind of God. What is, what needs, we're nothing but thoughts. We're nothing but thoughts. And because the mind of God is just so vast, that's how so many of us can sit in this place and be so uniquely different. Not have to compare, not have to compete, but embrace my own individual identity because God had enough breath to go around. Somebody say, as I think I am. Phase two is the conversion phase. In the biblical sense, conversion means a turning, a spiritual turning away from sin and repentance and to Christ in faith. It is a dramatic turning away from one path in order to pursue an entirely new one. Remember, true repentance involves conviction and returning. Jesus says, uh, you heard me say I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. He was going back to the Father. Remember, repentance is to return. In conversion, we also return. It's dangerous to just turn from sin without returning to God. I used to say uh, I did a lot. I did a 360 when I got saved until I realized that 360 looks like the 40 years. Come on. That the Israelites spent wandering around that same mountain. Dealing with, I'm sorry, us to death, y'all. A million times a day. I ain't mean to say to death. Lord, say rebuke that in Jesus' name. Um, I'm sorry, us a million times. But then guess what? Go right back to doing the same thing. What's that Groundhog Day when the same thing just keep happening over and over and over? Yeah, y'all know Dylan. He repeats the behavior because he does not know True repentance. Whether he's acknowledging the behavior because he got caught. I know, I know, I done just, yeah, I got caught, so I'm sorry now. Or because he really recognizes it's wrong. Neither of these are enough to produce change. His mind got to change concerning that behavior. His proximity to that behavior has to change. How he views that behavior has to change. He has got to be renewed in the spirit of his mind God didn't just convict us he changed us he took our wrongs and gave us his rights Paul says that God imputes his righteousness into us it ain't our righteousness it's his so he took away that nasty ugly life and he did something about it We had something to return back to because of Jesus. A concept in and what imputed righteousness is is it's just the it's just God taking what belongs to Him and giving it to us as though it were our own. You know, experienced Indian givers they give you something and talk about getting it back, or people that give you something. You remember when you tell everybody, "I blessed the meet you the other day," like okay, but that's not how God imputes His righteousness. Our life witnesses to the fact of his goodness. He ain't got to walk around saying, Jesus says what I do testifies about me. So he don't have to walk around saying what he is and what he ain't. What he's done on the inside of us should testify about who God is. Somebody say, I'm the righteousness of God. This is why in deliverance we don't just cast out. This is why in prophecy we don't just point out the wrongs. This is why we don't just speak the truth. This is why God didn't just bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. This is why Jesus didn't just convict convict the world. This is why Jesus wasn't just full of truth. This is why connection is being made every service at that door. Sometimes, y'all, we treat people like I've already done enough for you. As if we the ones that died for they sin. If you didn't die, you ain't done enough. (sighs) 
Jesus produced life. Disciples partner with Jesus in helping to maintain the life of those that he's given it to. We got to stop leaving people as they are. We tell them they can't smoke, but we don't tell them what they can do. Don't go to the club. They say, what can I do? Can't cuss. So what I'm going to say? Can't have sex before marriage. So what I'm going to do? <laughs> ah, you prayed for me at the altar, so now what's next? You invited me to church. What am I supposed to do? Everybody else has lifted, worshiping. You up on the front row and I'm in the back. What am I supposed to do? Bishop teaches us in our leadership meetings, there should always be a next step. We are requiring for people to let so much go, but are we really willing to show them how or what to put in place of what they're convinced to let go of? There's a scripture that I always think about in Matthew, and it talks about how an evil spirit leaves a person, leaves a house, and the house is swept clean. And it says the spirits roam around, and it go, finally goes back to that same house, and he recognizes that the house is clean. Now, a clean house is a good house, but a clean, full house is a strong house. So because that house was only clean and not filled, there was not only room for that one, but he bought his partners. Come on, my boy, I got a place for us. Clean and everything. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah. That's Matthew 12, 43 through 45. Somebody say, Lord, show me how to increase my faith. <sighs> Listen, it's good, ain't you? Know, that's why I said, I was like, dang, you tearing me up. Okay. Listen, we were with God in the beginning. The rapid progression of sin is what initially and continuously separates us from God. That's crazy. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. So if you don't want to get close, I'm going to have to say it. If you don't want to get close, you probably need to check your heart. The children of Israel, they refused to get close to the mountain. They told Moses, hey, you go talk to, you go talk to bro for me. I ain't going. Nah, not today. I'm not going. Because they knew what. They were whoring around. So they knew that they couldn't get close to their husband because had they got close without Moses. Yeah. Man. Somebody said I need to return back to my first love. Bishop says Sunday that it's a whole lost and found section in the Bible. I had to go read that. Phase three, connection. All right. Uh, a few words that came to mind when I think about connections, the closeness, feelings, relationships, mutual respect, to be in tune. Uh, there is, this is the place where we begin to learn God. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, we will have many experiences in this phase that prove the providence of God. God's providence is his caring provision for his people as he guides them along their faith journey. Thank you, baby. Accomplished art. Thank you, Elder Derek. <laughs> Sorry, I'm nervous, y'all. Uh, accomplishing his purpose in them. God's mission is to save people and shape them to be more like Christ. In the book of Exodus, their entire journey up until the promised land was God showing the children of Israel his caring provision. The plagues, the parting of the Red Sea, the Jordan standing up on both sides, the manna, the quail, the cloud, the fire. He chose to perform many miracles in order to convince them of his love for them. Although he continued to prove himself in this phase, they still had no capacity for God or relational comprehension. We often read about them complaining and begging to go back into slavery, turning on Moses and Aaron, down God, his intentions toward them. Like, there was just a whole mess in there. They refused proximity. Has somebody ever asked you, y'all, for advice and you give it to them? 
Try to help my me like I'm pouring out all my oil. Like, shout out left you and I ain't got nothing. And they're right at the end of the period. But, y'all, this oil cost me something. This a hundred years of oil and I'm just pouring it, but you, you, mm, you don't have the capacity for God, neither relational comprehension. Everything you say to them, it's a but. It's a why that ain't right. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, if you didn't trust me, make that make sense to me. Like, and I, I start getting mad like, bro, you tried me. Like, you really rolled up on me for my wisdom, and then you like, nah, nah, that ain't it. I'm about ready to turn up some tables around this mug. Yeah, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm the only one like that. I'm still working out my own soul salvation. But these are signs that, there is, that they're in the connection phase. And what I love about God is that when, uh, when they're in this phase, uh, those of us who are already in community, we can't get frustrated with them. In this place, people need more intercession than they do discipleship. Moses went to God. He said, God, these are your people. And in this connection phase, God is so intentional because he doesn't want people to get so attached to us that they miss him. He don't want, he don't want to take the risk of us getting all the credit for a work that only he can do. So God say, get your hand off them for a minute and go to your closet and pray for them until their season of connection is up. Now, another thing about them is they came out with a mixed multitude. Another biblical proof that they weren't ready for relationship. Uh, some um, translations called it rabble. Um, and because of the mixed multitude that came with them, they began to take on the mind of the mixed multitude. Somebody say, let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. Now this rabble began to lust and crave for the things of the world, and eventually, that's what the children of Israel did. And the behavior of the a mixed multitude was to not serve one God, but they had many gods. And this is the mind or the thoughts that the children of Israel begin to take on. To receive the benefit of connection, we've got to get rid of the mixture. Mm. Listen, Paul said to the church of Corinth, he said, now you realize that your bodies are actually part of Christ? Now should a man take his part, his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? They ain't had one God, had many gods. They weren't loyal, they weren't faithful, they were prostitutes. Yeah. Should his body, his body be joined with the prostitute? But if we don't get the mixture out, we begin to take on the attitudes of the mixed multitude. God helped them with Pharaoh, but they were responsible for surrendering their hearts. Connection is so important because it puts us in a position to choose who we're going to serve. This is the place where God is willing to prove himself in hopes of permanent posture and faithfulness in return. He stands in this place to prove that he is that he is and that there isn't anyone else like him. Now, all, this, is, this is a real story. Now, all of uh, Bishop and Lady's assistants, they either have a pocket full of peppermint, and I ain't gonna tell y'all who be eating it, but they either have a pocket full of peppermint or a purse full of peppermint. And this particular Sunday, like I'm gonna have to tell on her, um, Lady Mixon, Derek and Norman were sitting on the front and Lady Mixon looked to Norman, you know, like with a hand out, like my peppermint, like you already know. And I remember, and I may be saying it wrong, but I know it was to this extent. Derek looked over Norman and looked at Lady Mixon and said, 
you, I'm your connection. You don't get your supply from nobody else. <laughs> That sound like an addict did, like somebody really, oh, that's really know how to, yeah, yeah. But it was so funny. But I began to think about that, how in the place of connection, God wants us to understand that I'm your supplier. My husband don't do no drugs or nothing like that. <laughs> but that was very druggish, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. So often we break the connection after the conversion, and when we lose connection, we lose conviction. So we end up with a whole lot of believers, but very few faithful and fruitful followers. Now, I want to clarify that there is a difference between connection and relationship. While connection is about doing and actions and usually time constraint, Relationships are about being in the experience of connecting with someone over an extended period of time. Now, phase four, conception. It's part of my favorite ones. Confection, uh, con conception isn't first because God's ultimate goal is relationship. This is why I know early, um, early in my life, one of my greatest struggles was with uh, being sexually promiscuous. But it was all because the enemy, he wanted to keep me from relationship. And just like Derek and Norman with that peppermint, the enemy said, okay, I'm going to be your supply today. I'm going to provide for you today. I'm going to please your flesh this day. I'm going to give you what you want today. But God is so merciful. Because he allowed me to stay in the place of connection until all that mixture was out of me. There's still things, still things that I'm working out. But to say, like, we got to get that stuff out. I was reading the other day and the author said, we've got to stop focusing on living life for God and start to enjoy the journey of living with God. Uh, a relationship is the way two or more people are connected or the way they behave towards one another. Ask yourself, is my behavior, what is my behavior or how is my behavior towards God and what he loves and who he loves? Because it ain't enough just to love God. It ain't enough just to serve God. It ain't enough just to get up here and sing or preach or pray. That ain't enough. Jesus did life on life. Every ounce of his ministry was relational. From the moment God decided that I need to send him to this very day, he's relational. The work at, um, in the scripture, uh, they were telling Jesus, did we cast out devils in your name? Like We got all this big anointing and power in your name. We're doing big things for you. And Jesus said to them, I don't know you. Man, my heart probably would just, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I got to say this real quick. This is going to be funny. Bishop has sent a, um, I think it was Bishop who had sent a, a sermon clip. It's time for me to go. <laughs> it's time for me to go. Oh, <laughs> It's time for me to go. Uh, well, yeah, sent that sermon clip. Oh, it's time for me to go. I won't tell the story about the sermon clip. But the law is summed up in one, in one, in two commandments. But both those commandments are love. He said the greatest is love. Now it's a problem when we got a major in power. But our minor is in his presence and his people. We love God and we love his people. God wants us in relationship, guys. Before he addresses the, the, the fruit, he needs relational proximity. This is why he blessed marriage and, 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 and reserved the marriage bed to, bed to not be defiled. Because he understood that if I can get you in, in re relationship, 
and intimacy, your fruit gonna last. But producing outside of relationship and intimacy, come on, Sarah, Hagar, and, and Abram. It produces an Ishmael that constantly fights and wars against what God is truly birthing in our life. We can't allow our pride, our thoughts, our emotions, our angers, our aggravations. We can't allow that to stand in the way of who we are in the presence of God and in the presence of his people. And some of you have made a decision today to take your next steps in belief. God is increasing your faith. Yeah, he increasing your faith. He's taking you. He's taking you. He's taking you. Because I, we've all been given a section of the earth. You can stand to your feet. We've all been given a section of the earth. And the scripture says that God has given each and every one of us a measure of faith. And because faith is fruitful and faith produces, when we leave the earth, when, when we leave, my part of the earth should look just like heaven. If when I breathe my last breath, the garden that God has called me to cultivate does not look like his kingdom, my faith is not measured up. And it's not that God did not give it to me, but I refuse to let my faith increase. Today you've made a decision to be dead and alive, not just for Christ, but with Christ. It's beautiful. This is what increases our faith. So Lord, we thank you so much today. We thank you for what you've spoken and what you've said to us today, Father. We just yield and surrender our lives to you today, God. And we say, Father, show us how to increase our faith, God. Give us the discipline and the devotion, God, to be true disciples and followers of Jesus Christ and not to be lovers of ourselves today, God, and not to just rest in the fact that you're Savior, God, but we want to experience all aspects of you, Papa. So we just surrender today. And I just pray today that where we're weak, when we're, what we can't do, God, you can so I stand in my prophetic authority and I give every vessel to you. Every vessel in this place, God, I give it to you. I give it to you now, God, that you would increase their faith. We love you, Father. We honor you and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Give God some praise for that awesome word today. God wants us in relationship with him. And I believe that these candidates today are taking a step into the relationship with Christ today. Amen. So we're going to rally around them. We're going to support them. We're going to celebrate them. Amen. Because this is an awesome time in their faith amen this is what's taking their faith from belief until faith amen these are the works of their faith amen so we'll have our first candidate first candidate is Starnisha Washington Woo! Washington
confession of your faith and upon the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We now baptize you in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Celebrate God in this place. doing in Leslie's life. Amen. Come on, a young man going down in Jesus' name. Come on, we got to make bigger noise than that. He could be anywhere he wants to in this world tonight, but he's right here laying his whole life down and being resurrected new in Jesus' name. Amen. upon the profession of your faith and the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We now baptize you in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Foster. Let's give it up for Nicholas Foster. Another young man has given his life to Christ. Going down and coming up new today. profession of your faith and in the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we now baptize you in Jesus name be filled with the Holy Ghost
because he's been so merciful. Hallelujah. 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 When the enemy comes in like a flood, he's lifting up a standard against him. That's the God that we serve. Come on, I need some people to really lift up a praise tonight. give your name praise tonight for you alone are worthy of glory God you are amazing and we bless you tonight God we lift your name God above every name above disease above sickness above depression above oppression above poverty God we lift your name and that name is Jesus and at the name of Jesus every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that you are Lord that you are Savior that you are Redeemer that you are Messiah God we thank you for that name that name that saves hallelujah that name that heals and that name that delivers thank you for the name Jesus we lift you Jesus we magnify you Jesus we praise you tonight Jesus we give you glory Jesus we make your name big tonight we lift you God oh God we honor you oh God we thank you we thank you for what you've already done we thank you for what you're going to do oh God you exceed every expectation oh God but we stand tonight standing on your word God your word tonight God a word that never fails oh God the word that accomplishes what it's sent out to do oh God we bless your name for every every person under the sound of my voice God I thank you now that you're touching them God that you're meeting every need in the name of Jesus God I thank you that you're walking with him that you're talking with him that you're comforting them that you're strengthening them God I thank you tonight for favor I speak favor over your people I speak strength to your people. I speak now God. Increase faith. Uh, increase our faith tonight. Uh, increase our faith tonight. Uh, help us to believe you for more. Help us to trust you for more. Help us to go further. Oh God, because we have the faith. Uh, because we have the capacity. God, we thank you tonight uh, that you've given us uh, everything that we need. Uh, oh God, we bless your name. Uh, oh God, we lift up our sons. Uh, we lift up our daughters. Uh, we thank you that they're coming under the blood. Uh, we shall be able to prosper we thank you Lord God that you have a call on their lives we thank you that they're marked for you oh God in the name of Jesus oh God we bless you tonight oh God that you know what we stand in the need of and you're more than able more than able more than able to do exceedingly to do abundantly oh God more than we can ask more than we can think that you're just that good you're just that great and we you tonight uh, we lift you tonight uh, in the name of Jesus uh, so God uh, we lift up these candidates uh, hallelujah oh God we say now God touch their minds yeah that might show you yeah oh God we thank you God that you're giving them the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus uh, that when the enemy comes in uh, when the enemy like when the enemy lies to him God we thank you that they know who they are and they know whose they are Oh, God, we thank you for our identity tonight. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, that you call them your own. Uh, and you know them by name. Uh, and no enemy in hell can pluck them out of your hands. Uh, so, God, we thank you tonight. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, God, we say now touch their hearts, God. Oh, God, touch every broken place, God. In the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, God, I thank you tonight uh, that you are the heart mender. Oh, God, I bless your name tonight, God. Oh, God. I I thank you for what you're doing now in their lives. I thank you, God, for their, the gifts on the inside of them. I thank you that you're stirring up every gift tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that you're fanning the flames tonight. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, God, that every door that they step in, God. Oh, God, that you meet them there. The favor is there. In the name of 
Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for a mind and a will to serve you like never before. I thank you that they're unapologetic about you, God. I thank you that they're bold. I thank you for a bold faith in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God. Oh, God, that they shall go and they shall do great exploits, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I even cover everybody that's connected to them, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray right now for every connection, for every relationship, for every friendship, oh, God, I thank you now, God, that it aligns with your will, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and we bless you, God, that wherever they go, that whatever they do, oh, God, they keep you first, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and we just thank you tonight uh, that you're filling them even with your spirit. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. Uh, oh, God, fill them, oh, God. Uh, give them faith to believe it like never before. Fill them afresh, oh, God. Uh, oh, God, we thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, uh, fill us all afresh tonight, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, pour out your glory, God. In the name of Jesus, pour it out, oh, us God we want your glory we want your presence oh God we love you oh God we we thirst for your presence oh God we hunger for your word oh God we hunger for you Jesus oh God you said blessed are those that hunger and thirst for you God you said you fill us fill us up oh God fill us up oh God fill us up oh God Fill us up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and we thank you now. We thank you, God, for what you're doing now, God. Oh, God, we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Come on and just lift up a praise right here. Come on and lift up a praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Vaughn for that powerful prayer over our candidates. Amen. 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 So now we're going to uh, do our presentation of our certificates to our candidates that were baptized tonight. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. So our first certificate of baptism, um, this certifies that Star Washington was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ on the third day of April in the year of our Lord, 2024, at Unity Christian Center, signed by our senior pastor, Sylvester Mixon. Let's give it up for Star. This certificate of baptism, um, this certifies that Leslie Foster was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ on the third day of April in the year of our Lord, uh, 2024, at Unity Christian Center. Signed, Senior Pastor Sylvester Mixon. Let's give it up for Leslie. And lastly, we have Nicholas Foster. This certifies that Nicholas Foster was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ on the third day of April in the, Lord, in the year of our Lord, 2024, at Unity Christian Center, signed our senior pastor, Sylvester Mixon. Congratulations, Nicholas. Come on, let's give it up for our, our candidates. Let's give it up for our, our, our speaker tonight, Pastor D. Now let's give it up for, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, tonight. Yeah! Yeah. We're certainly thankful for all that he's done today. Uh, just real quick, just want to give you guys an opportunity. Right now, we're going to uh, put our giving links up on the screen. Um, and if any of you guys feel led to sow tonight, this would be a great time to sow. We have our four options. If you um, if you need an envelope, would you kindly raise your hand? Uh, and then one of our ushers, um, Daquan, you can get with Daquan. He has some envelopes for us uh, that you can sow. We got one right here in the front. Uh, you can sow. We're going to uh, drop our offers in the basket. Of course, you guys know about four ways to give. We can give it by envelope. Uh, you can scan the barcode and give through PayPal. 
online at unitychristiancenter.org slash give and you can text um, uh, the number 777-977 and you can text Unity CC Give and then you will text your amount that you would like to sow tonight. Amen. How many of you guys were blessed by the service tonight? I'm so happy for these candidates. Yeah. Today starts a new day for you guys, a new beginning. Walk in your new beginning. God is doing something in each and every last one of your life. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be here to support you along the way. Amen. 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 So if all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to uh, stand on our feet and uh, get ready to be dismissed. So, Lord, we just thank you for this night, Lord God. We thank you, God, for all that you did tonight, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for the souls that were snatched back into your kingdom today, Father God. We thank Lord God, for the healing and the deliverance that went forth today, Father God. We thank you today, Lord God, for your spirit, Lord God, that, were poured, that was poured out into our hearts, Lord God. And we thank God for the word that was spoken over our lives today, Lord God, to increase our faith today, Father. So God, I just thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done. I thank you for all that you will do, Lord God. Now give us traveling grace and mercy to our destinations today, Lord God, and give us sweet rest uh, in your Holy Spirit, Lord God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.